Autophagy is a process that's rarely talked about or described in popular bodybuilding and fitness magazines, but it's one of the most important processes to aid your health and bodybuilding and fitness efforts. In fact, one of the major benefits in, uh, that, that's, uh, that's involved with intermittent fasting and other types of fasting is the fact that it promotes the autophagy process. What is autophagy? Autophagy is a Greek, Greek word meaning self-eating. Autophagy is a natural cleansing process in the body that allows cells to actually, essentially eat themselves. Basically, it's kind of a clean-out process that clears away debris, old cells. Uh, even, for example, when you, when you work a muscle, there's a breakdown products, there's bits of tissue and stuff in the muscle that has to be cleared out. Uh, and unless this, uh, this excessive uh, breakdown tissue is cleared out of the muscle after you train, the muscle won't grow. You're actually slowing your growth down. So you can see autophagy is very, very important for muscle growth. Uh, the uh, the uh, organisms that do this are macrophages. They're kind of a white blood cell. They go into the muscle. Uh, when you when you uh, after the workout and they more or less clear out the uh, excessive debris left by the uh, let's say the breakdown of muscle fibers and this allows the muscle to rebuild. Uh, I'm not going to go into that. I just rather concentrate today on autophagy. But what my point is that process that occurs after the workout is autophagy and it's absolutely required for building muscle. Researchers believe that the process of autophagy evolved as a response to stress. While autophagy is always active behind the scenes, it kicks into high gear during times of stress, especially starvation. When cells are starved, they begin to digest and recycle their own proteins and other important molecules to be used for fuel and to regenerate new healthy cells. In other words, autophagy is a survival mechanism of the human body. As they recycle and renew these valuable parts, they also discard any toxic waste products, pathogens like viruses, bacteria, or dead or damaged components, as I used in that example with the muscle fibers uh, or the muscle debris left over from muscle damage due to training. This helps clear the body of toxins and damaged cells, all of which contribute to aging, inflammation, and increased risk of chronic disease. Autophagy is essential to our survival. The cells would not thrive or survive without it. Even more so, it's essential to staying young and healthy. Unfortunately, the autophagy response tends to decrease as we age. Uh, one of the things that encourages autophagy, uh, it's a little complex, but you have different proteins. Uh, one of the uh, anabolic triggers to cause muscle growth is this stuff called the mammalian target of rapamycin or mTOR. Uh, mTOR unfortunately inhibits autophagy, but another protein called AMPK stimulates autophagy. So these two proteins have to be in balance for both health and for muscle gains. One study uh, to support this, uh, I should say the key to longevity may be then increasing the cell's autophagic ability. One study to support this found that the cells of long-lived individuals, such as people uh, age 100 and over, showed higher rates of autophagy than younger seniors uh, who are maybe 75 years of age. In other words, one of the keys to healthy aging, especially advanced aging, is a potent autophagy process. These older people have the ability to clear out the, all the crap that builds up in their cells, senescent cells, all the stuff that contributes to aging. That's one of the reasons why they make it to over 100. In fact, it's a major reason why these people live to over 100. Several other studies have shown links between autophagy defects, aging, and degenerative diseases such as Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, and even cancer. The basic idea of autophagy has been known for some time, but only in the last few decades of research has been able to figure out exactly how it works. In fact, in 2016, Japanese Dr. Yoshinori Osami won a Nobel Prize in Physiology of Medicine for his groundbreaking autophagy research. In his studies, Dr. Shami used starvation to activate autophagy. Now, you're probably beginning to see the connection between fasting and autophagy because starvation or consuming no calories turns on autophagy. It stimulates AMPK, turns on the autophagy process. He discovered, this doctor discovered specific genes involved in the regulation of autophagy. The process itself is very complex, but one of the major plays, as I said, is is AMPK, this protein. 
AMK, AMPK is activated by ADB and AMP, molecules that signal when the energy cells is compromised. Let me explain them. Your major form of energy, the most elemental form of energy in the body, is adenosine triphosphate, also known as ATP. ATP uh, uh, releases energy when one of the one of the three phosphate bonds that make up ATP break off. That produces energy. When that happens, you now have a, a adenosine diphosphate, uh, and then you ha then that another phosphate breaks off. It becomes AMP, adenosine monophosphate, and that triggers AMPK because it, what happens then? It's a, a the, when the AMK, AMP builds up in the body or in the cells. Uh, the the, uh, the body senses that and, and, and indicates that the cells are low in energy. So AMPK now is released. AMPK stimulates not only autophagy, but among other things, it stimulates the use of fat and, and muscle as an energy source. AMPK basically is an energy sensor in cells. It increases energy. Uh, so as I said, when, when AMPK kicks out, that's what stimulates the autophagy process. The other major player, as I said earlier, is mTOR or the malleate target of rapamycin. That's needed for cell growth and protein synthesis. It also activates insulin receptors. In other words, mTOR is your major anabolic uh, key player, let's say. How, but uh, mTOR works opposite to, uh, to uh, AMPK because it inhibits autophagy. So, in other words, uh, there's a problem with aging in the sense that as people get older, there tends to be an imbalance between AMPK and mTOR. When that happens and M mTOR uh, dominates, you have a decreased autophagy, and that allows uh, dangerous cells to build up or proliferate, including cancer cells, including senescent cells, which stimulate the aging process. So for healthy aging, you want to have a balance between AMPK and mTOR. Too much AMPK doesn't allow enough muscles, muscle synthesis to maintain muscle mass, and then you get something called sarcopenia, which is a loss of muscle. That alone can increase uh, mortality. Uh, but on the other hand, you want to have uh, AMPK. You want to bring it up at times to clear out, as I said, all the debris, all the gunk that builds up in cells. This allows the cells to work more efficiently. So again, you have to have a balance of AMPK and mTOR to uh, to uh, be healthy. And one of the, again, the major benefits of fasting, such as intermittent fasting and other types of fasting, is that again, it's it's a starvation process in essence, short term short term starvation. And when you're ever going to charge short stop starvation, that process I described earlier of the breakdown of ATP into ADB and AMP is going to occur. This is going to kick out AMPK, which in turn is going to kick out autophagy. It's going to clear out the cells, make the cells healthier. That's your health benefits of intermittent fasting. That's why intermittent fasting is uh, known to uh, increase longevity. Uh, amino acid leucine, which is one of the three branch chain amino acids, uh, it's a key regulator of autophagy. Namely, when uh, when insulin uh, when leucine levels drop, autophagy kicks in, and conversely, when you take in leucine, it's it it, wor it works to increase uh, muscle protein synthesis. By stimulating mTOR, that's how leucine works. Leucine inhibits a protein that that in, that blunts the uh, the uh, promotion of mTOR. That's how leucine works. So leucine lowers autophagy but increases mTOR. So the easiest, fast, and the easiest and fastest way to uh, to, to uh, start autophagy is very simply to deprive your body of nutrients, including leucine and proteins. Uh, this, by the way, uh, a lot of people ask me the question about whether they should take in uh, amino acids such as branch chain amino acids or leucine when they're undergoing any type of fast, including intermittent fasting. My response to this is absolutely not. Because remember, anytime you take in any amino acids, especially leucine and the branch chain amino acids, you're going to block autophagy. And that's what you're trying to do when you, that's one of the main benefits of inter intermittent fasting. You don't want to take in any protein. You don't want to take in any amino acids when you're on any kind of fast, regardless of what you read, regardless of advice given on any of these ridiculous websites or, bl or blogs. Don't eat any protein or amino acids, especially leucine, when you're fasting. I'll say it again. You're defeating the whole purpose of fasting. It's ridiculous. So basically, autophagy is a natural cleansing process in the body that allows cells to more or less eat themselves. 
basically a tafji means eat them, you know, eat self eating, you know. When this happens, cells recycle their essential parts to help make new healthy cells while ridding waste products and damaged parts. The life protecting process kicks into gear when the body is starved or stressed, and that and, and may be the key to autophagy and intermittent fasting, as I said. One of the most documented ways to activate intermittent fasting, as I intermittent, uh, I'm sorry, activate autophagy again is through fasting or intermittent fasting. Uh, and that's different. Why you know there's different ways of intermittent. I've covered this in other videos. The 16 to 18 method of uh, fast of uh, that's called the lean gains uh, method of fast intermittent fasting it involves 16 hours of fasting, leaving you with an eight hour eating window, such as eating between 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. This method may be enough to boost autophagy, but once you've been depleted, the glycogen stores in your liver, uh, you know, after several hours of fasting, the glycogen stores in your liver are going to be uh, depleted. And when that happens, AM AMPK is activated, mTOR is suppressed, and autophagy kicks in. That's how intermittent fasting works. Some of you may know this as being in the beginning stages of ketosis. Uh, this can happen within a little uh, 12 to 16 hours of fasting. Uh, but the for for maximum autophagy, the best, uh, the most effective time for fasting is, is between 24 and 48 hours. That that maximizes the autophagy process. Uh, nobody really knows the the ideal way to fast. To tell you the truth, I mean, uh, it depends on whatever you could tolerate. You know, some people can tolerate longer fasts than others. I know that if you go uh, if you fast any type of fast that lasts more than 48 hours is going to lead to muscle cannibalism, muscle breakdown. And whatever type of fast you go on, you should always, as soon as you finish, always start to eat protein just to, just to prevent catabolic effects. Uh, intermittent fasting can be bad if it's done incorrectly, in a, and it can cause hormonal imbalances in women. Uh, and, uh, well, that's about it. That's all I could say for that. But again, the most, the, the, the most effective way to activate autophagy is through fasting or intermittent fasting. Uh, the maximum autophagy levels will occur somewhere between 24 and 48 hours of fasting. Uh, what about exercise? Just as fasting puts a stress on the body in order to do autophagy, exercise does this as well. One study on mice concluded that 90 min 95 minutes of exercise induced autophagy in the cerebral cortex of the brain which is very important for brain health, helps to prevent diseases such as Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. They also found that mice who spent just 30 minutes on a treadmill showed autoph autophagic activity, which reached a plateau in 80 minutes. In humans, it's much harder to determine exactly how long and hard you need to exercise to induce autophagy. Of course, your diet, nutrition, status before and during exercise will also influence autophagy. But it does seem that high-intensity interval training which is, which it basically uh, involves doing, for example, let's say you're on a treadmill, you do uh, you go for maximum intensity for maybe three minutes, bringing your heart rate up to maybe 90%. Then for the next minute or two, you lower it all the way down to 60% of maximum. That's high intensity interval training. It may be more beneficial than moderate intensity continuous training in boosting autophagy. One recent study showed that uh, high intensity interval training was more effective in increasing autophagy in, in heart and skeletal muscle cells. So basically what this says is that high intensity interval training is the best type of exercise to do if you want to stimulate the autophagy process. So what are the benefits of autophagy? Various studies have discovered a number of benefits related to autophagy. It promotes the growth of new cells, clears out damaged cells. Autophagy can improve cognitive function, brain structure, and neuroplasticity by promoting the growth of brain and ner uh, ner nerve cells. It protects against cardiovascular disease. Uh, however, too high or too low uh, 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 an autophagy phase could actually be harmful for the heart, so you have to be careful with that. Autophagy boosts the immune system. It reduces inflammation and protects against inflammatory diseases such as arthritis and, uh, and, and uh, autoimmune diseases. Uh, it lowers the risk of neurodegenerative diseases, like I said earlier, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. It helps to protect against cancer, and it slows down aging. As I said, older people who are healthy always have a high rate of autophagy. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's, an, it's considered an essential requirement for longevity. Uh, <clears throat> But, but again, you know, there has to be a balance. Too much autophagy 
you know, for example, if you if you uh, fast for over 48 hours, that can actually have a reverse effect and lead to cell death. So that's a good overview, I think, of autophagy. Uh, again, the, the way you do it is by either not eating or exercising intensely, reducing calories. The mo the easiest way to achieve autophagy is to go on an intermittent fast. And uh, if you really want a, a, an effect, uh, if you can handle it, you want to do high interval train the interval training during an intermittent uh, intermittent fasting. That might be a little tough to do, but in the first couple of hours of intermittent fasting, you should have enough muscle and liver glycogen left to uh, to engage in a, a let's say a short bout 20 30 minutes of high intensity interval training. That'll really kickstart autophagy if you can do that. So that's about it. Uh, I'm going to uh, discuss autophagy in uh, far more depth including the health effects uh, in my Applied Metabolics newsletter in an upcoming issue. That's at www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want information on supplements, exercise, science, uh, um, longevity or anti-aging research, uh, fat loss techniques that really work, women's health and fitness, supplement truths, uh, hormonal therapy, ergogenic aids, and many other topics, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter. You won't find anything like it on the net. There's nothing that comes close to the depth of my newsletter. It costs less than a daily newspaper. It costs less than a latte at Starbucks. Uh, and uh, I guarantee you will learn something from every issue, no matter what your level of edu education. Uh, again, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I will send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page, where each day I post new information on exercise science, nutrition, and uh, longevity, and general health and medicine, state-of-the-art stuff, brand new stuff that, uh, as it comes out, it gets posted on my Applied Metabolics Facebook page. I will also answer short questions submitted to me by current subscribers only. I don't, uh, I don't uh, respond to unsolicited questions. You have to be a current subscriber. I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics site. Uh, I also want to add that while I will answer questions uh, f uh, from current subscribers, this is not an unlimited thing. Uh, a recent subscriber uh, must have heard one of my videos where I said I'll answer questions, and he started a answer. Uh, he started asking me every question that came into his head. This went on for like days. I, I had to cut him off because, you know, I listen. I have other things to do. I can't answer questions every single day, but I don't mind answering occasional questions. But you know, if you want to ask me a bunch of questions, unfortunately, you're going you're gonna to have to have a consult with me. You know, then you can ask me as many questions as you want, but don't send me questions every single day. You don't get that for 10 bucks a month. You're not going to get unlimited questions. I don't think anybody in the world's going to do that. Anyway, so it's www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Take care. Thanks for listening.